What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to determine the optimal number of features when training a machine learning model so let's get right into it all right so we're going to learn how to find the optimal number of parameters the optimal number of features when training a machine learning model in this video today now optimal might be a little bit too strong of a word here we can get philosophical about what optimal means but in general it's not always reasonable to add more data more information more features to our model to make it better because oftentimes useless features that don't contribute any meaningful information to the target variable uh, can mislead the model, can confuse the model, and more is not always better. In fact, it's reasonable to reduce the number of parameters also due to performance reasons if we can keep most of the performance. So the sweet spot would be to keep almost all of the performance and to reduce the number of uh, features as much as possible. And today we're going to learn how to find the sweet spot. Now, in this video, we're going to work with the adult income data set. You can work with whatever data set you like. I'm going to use this one because I already have a video on it. And because after the pre-processing, I have over 100 features. So it makes sense to use something that has a lot of features. So we can see how reducing the features is um, changing the performance. Because if you only have 10 features, you don't have too much room to explore. If you have 100 features or more than 100 features, you can reduce them and see, okay, for the first X features, nothing changes, then you have a radical uh, or a rapid decrease in performance. So this helps us to, to, to see how this process works. So again, you can use whatever data set you like, I'm going to use this one. And I'm also going to just copy paste the pre processing because I've done it in another video. And the pre processing itself is first of all, not very complicated. Second of all, not relevant to this video today. So we're going to start here by importing pandas as PD. By the way, if you don't have pandas, and the other packages installed, you're going to have to install them using pip. So just pip or pip3 install pandas, matplotlib for the visualization and scikit-learn for the machine learning part. Those are the three packages for today. And we're going to start here by just importing the data set. I'm going to say here data frame equals pd read csv. And I'm going to import the income.csv data set here. So this is what it looks like. We have age, work class, education, and so on and so forth. And the pre-processing basically just means, or what we're going to do here for the pre-processing is we're going to one hot encode all the categorical variables. So instead of having education with a bunch of values, we're going to take them and we're going to turn them into uh, individual features with zero or one as a value. So into binary features. And if a feature only has two, uh, possible values, we're going to binary encode it as zero and one. So all of this, I'm going to copy and paste, I'm going to explain it briefly, but that's not what we want to focus on in this video today. That is the code here. So basically just uh, dropping the feature that we already have and getting the feature one hot encoding it using the get dummies method, and then adding the prefix. So instead of having work class, we drop the work class feature. And now we have uh, work class underscore uh, where is it? Work class here, work class underscore private, work class underscore local government, work class underscore self employed, and so on. Um, we have new binary features. And we do that for all these categorical features. Then also we binary encode gender and income. Uh, male is transformed to one, female to zero, and then income above 50k is one, uh, below or equal is zero. And now this is what the data frame looks like. So again, this is not the focus of this video today, you can just type it from from the video here if you want to. Uh, but the focus is now here, we have 108 columns, and we want to train a classifier we want to train a classification model. And we don't want to use all of these features, we want to find the optimal number of features for training, for example, a random forest classifier. So how would we do that? Now, again, optimal is not the best word for it, because we can have many different ways, uh, many different strategies to find the quote unquote, best number of parameters. But the one that we're going to take a look at today is we're going to keep track of the so called F1 score, which takes uh, which takes into account the precision and the recall. Um, if you don't know what precision and recall are, just go to my channel type precision recall, and you're going to find videos, uh, or one video on precision recall and F1 score. Uh, they're basically just performance measures for classifiers telling you how accurate you are when you make predictions, how many of the predictions you miss, and so on. 
Um, but we want to keep this F1 score as high as possible while reducing the number of features. So what we're going to do is we're going to train a random forest classifier and a random forest classifier has this nice feature of keeping track of feature importances. So a random forest classifier don't, uh, doesn't just give you the predictions and uh, a model that you can use to predict new instances. It also gives you feature importances. It tells you how important the individual features are. So what we're going to do now is we're going to train a model on all the features. We're going to remove the least important feature. We're going to train a model on the remaining features. We're going to then remove again the least important feature train a model again on the remaining features. And we're going to do this up until we're left with one feature. And then we're going to plot a graph of the resulting F1 scores. That's the idea. And the idea is that probably in the beginning, we're not going to see any meaningful uh, reduction of performance when removing features. But at some point, probably we're going to have a steep decline in performance because now we're removing important features and this will uh, indicate how many features we want to have or what the important features are. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say here from sklearn, let me just zoom in a little bit here again, from sklearn.ensemble, we're going to import the random forest classifier from sklearn, sklearn.metrics, we're going to import the F1 score, and then we're going to also import matplotlib.pyplotsplt. By the way, if you use something that doesn't have feature importances, so for example, you're not using a random force classifier, but you're using uh, some other classifier that doesn't have feature importances, what you can do is you can always just drop the variable that has the smallest correlation or the, the least significant correlation uh, to the target variable. So correlation goes from negative one to one, and you can just remove the feature with the correlation to the target variable that's closest to zero, so the, the least meaningful uh, and you can use that. Uh, you can use that strategy here. But with a random forest classifier, it's very nice because we have the feature importances already. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say here x is going to be the data frame, but we're going to drop the target column, which is going to be income. X is one because we're dropping a column, and y. So the target is going to be just the income. So df income like this. All right, so we're going to start by training a random forest model on all of the data. So we're going to say here forest equals random forest classifier. I'm going to provide here the keyword n jobs equals negative one. This just means that my random forest classifier will use all the available CPU cores. So it's going to um, speed up the performance here, which makes sense if you have uh, a strong machine, you want to use all the cores to speed up the process here. And we're going to provide a random state because we want to have something predictable here. We want to have always the same forest. We don't want to have randomness here when we track the performance of the model when we remove features. We want to have the same model, the same forest, uh, but we want to remove features. So we want to have a random state here, uh, which is just a seat. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to train here. We're going to say forest.fit on all of the data, x and y. This is the first thing that we do. And then we're going to keep track of the scores. So F1 scores is going to be an empty list. And we're also going to keep track of the features. We're not just in interested in the scores. We also want to know what the features are that are uh, selected now. So if we know that the optimal number is X, we want to also know, okay, which X features are the most important ones in this case. So we have these two empty lists. And then we have number of features in the beginning. So number features start is just going to be x dot shape one, because x dot shape zero would be the amount of data points and x dot shape one is the column. So how many features the individual data points have. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say simply while x dot shape one, so while the columns, while the column amount is greater than zero. So while we still have features left, what we're going to do is we're going to print here a message. Let's use an F string here training random forest on the and then we can use x shape one most important features like this. And we can say feature 
importances is equal to forest dot feature importances with an underscore. This is a property of the random forest that gives us the importances for each feature. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to now evaluate how well our model performs. So we're going to make predictions. Why prediction is going to be equal to forest dot predict x. Now, by the way, of course, you can do an, a train test split to get a more um, meaningful result. So you can train on train data and you can evaluate on test data to make sure you actually get the best testing performance or performance on unseen data. For this video here, I now just uh, evaluated on the train data, which maybe doesn't make as much sense as evaluate, uh, evaluating it on test data. Um, however, we're going to now calculate the F1 score. So F1 is going to be equal to F1 score Y and Y prediction. So how well does our model perform here? And now we're going to say F1 scores dot append F1 and features dot append. We're going to append the columns that we have in X. So the list of features, basically. Now, if the shape of x, so if the columns, if the number of columns is equal to one, we break at this point, we reached the end. However, if not, we're going to now say least important index. So the index of the least important feature is feature importances dot argmin. So we choose the index that minimizes the feature importance. So argmin gives us the index of the feature with the least importance with the smallest importance. And what we do is we drop that feature. So x drop. And then we drop this column by saying x columns, least important index, axis one. And then what we do is we fit the model on this data again. So forest fit x y again. And we do that until we have no features left. So I can just run this now. And this will take some time. So you can see here, 107, 106, 105, and so on, it will go up until or down until one. And then we have the data stored in F1 scores and features. So we have a list of the scores, and we have a list of the features that are being used in this uh, specific iteration. And then we can visualize this. And maybe we can actually do this while this training is being done. So we don't have to to skip this part, we can just code in the in the um, in the time that this is training. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the features on the x axis, the number of features on the x axis, and we're going to have the f one scores on the y axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to say num underscore features is going to be equal to range num features start. So this is going to just be what we had in the beginning, the full number of features. Um, and we're going to go from this maximum number down to zero with a step size of negative one. So we're going from high to low. And then we just say plt plot and we want to plot the number of features on the x axis and the f one scores on the y axis. And what we want to do is we want to say x label is a number of features y label is going to be f1 scores title is going to be number of features versus f1 score and then we're going to say plt x limit so that we have actually from highest to lowest feature numbers we're going to say here number features start let's add a padding of five so we can see um so we don't so we have a little bit of padding left and right. So num features plus five, so five more features on the x axis, which we don't have values for. And one would be the smallest one, which we're going to subtract five. So we have some padding on the right side as well. And then we're going to just say plt show. Now let's see if the training is done. It is done. So you can see the last one was training on the one most important feature. And when I run this now here, you can see the f score on the y axis and the number of features on the x axis. So here we have uh, what did we start with 108 features on the left here. And you can see that removing features has almost no effect at all 
up until somewhere here where you can see, okay, the performance starts decreasing and here now it goes down rapidly. So here we have very, very important features that are being removed because the F1 score rapidly declines there. But here it doesn't really matter if I have 108 features or 20 features, it's not really a difference. We have almost 100% F1 score here. So this is already interesting. Now we can copy this, <clears throat> sorry. We can copy this and we can zoom into the last couple of values. So we can say here, um, negative 15 until the end. So the last 15 values here, the last 15 values here, then also, uh, here we want to have actually uh, minus, no, minus or plus 15. Let me just think about this. I'm going to go from Oh, let's just see if this works now. I'm not sure if I'm confused now, but let's just go with two here and two here. <clears throat> okay, this was not correct. So actually, this should just be 15, right? There you go. This is what I wanted. And you can see now that here we still have almost 100 uh, or one F1 score. But you can see that around six here, we have a, we could call it an elbow. We, we have some some point here where now the features, when you remove them, massively reduce the performance of the model. So either six or five, I would say, is the optimal number here. And if you now decide, okay, six is a good number, what you can do is you can just go ahead and say forest, or actually not forest, actually we have the list for this, so we can say features, and we can type negative six to get the six most important features used for this particular point here. And you can see in this case, it's age, final weight, educational number, capital gain, hours per week, marital status, married or not. And you can also see the F1 score for this particular model, which is exactly 0 0.9976. So very, very good. If we go to five now, so only five features, you can see it's already only 0 0.98. If I go to four, we should see a massive decrease here, 0 0.95. If I go to three features only, this is already much worse, 8.7. And if I only train this on one feature in the end, you can see we still have a good performance, but yeah, the final weight basically um, tells us how representative this particular row is. Uh, and I guess the second one is H, right? I would say that the second most, no, actually the marital status seems to be more important than H. But yeah, this is a way in which you can determine the quote unquote optimal number of features to use when training a machine learning model. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.